미국 하원에서 위안부 결의안 통과를 이끌어낸 주역 마이크 혼다 의원. 일본인 3세지만 일본 정부의 과거사 사과를 촉구하는 일에 앞장서고 있는 인물입니다. 인간의 존엄과 권리가 소중하게 지켜지기를 바라는 마음에서입니다. 칠선인 그는 위안부, 종교의 자유, 동성애자, 소외계층 등 인권 문제에 큰 관심을 갖고 의정활동과 더불어 국제적인 행보를 이어가고 있습니다. 시카고 한인 사회에서 열린 마이크 혼다 의원 8선 후원 행사에서 뉴스 매거진이 혼다 의원을 만났습니다. 지난 5월 9일 시카고 근교 나일스에서 열린 마이크 혼다 의원 후원 행사. 8선에 도전하는 혼다 의원을 돕기 위해 세계 한인 교류 협력기구 시카고 지부와 한미 우호 네트워크가 자리를 마련했다. 세월호 참사 희생자를 위한 묵념으로 시작된 행사. 한인 150여 명이 자리한 가운데 젠 샤코우스키, 빌 포스터 연방 하원의원이 참석해 혼다 의원에게 힘을 더했고 일리노이주 위안부 결의안 통과를 이끌어낸 일레인 네크리츠 주 하원의원도 함께했다. 김영진 전 농림부 장관도 혼다 의원을 후원하는 메시지를 전했다. 그분의 신념과 확신에 찬 결단은 이를 지켜본 많은 사람들에게 용기를 북돋아주고 온갖 고난과 역경 속에서도 정의가 반드시 승리한다고 하는 역사의 진실을 일깨워 주셨습니다. 경기도 광주 나눔의 집에 살고 있는 위안부 피해자 할머니 열 명이 쓴 편지가 전달되고 동영상 메시지도 상영됐다. 할머니들의 이야기를 듣는 혼다 의원 눈가에 맺힌 이슬. 한국에서 위안부 할머니를 직접 만났던 혼다 의원은 보고 싶다고 말한다. It's wonderful to see my the Weanbu yeah it's It's wonderful to see him. If I could talk to him right now, I would say to them, "Bo s h i b a y o 자신을 후원하는 행사에서 정치적 비전보다도 위안부 할머니들의 이야기로 시작하는 혼다 의원. 전쟁 범죄와 위안부 피해자에 대한 일본 정부의 사과와 책임을 촉구한다. Asking Japan. to apologize unambiguously, unequivocally, and asking for their full historical responsibility, the acknowledgement is, is critical because they are a, a country that has become a very powerful, influential democratic country. On top of that, it's important that they put this information in the textbook of their children. so that the children would learn what happened and what they had done as a nation in Asia and to tell the truth 일본계 3세임에도 불구하고 자신의 뿌리가 되는 일본을 향해 쓴소리를 내는 혼다 의원의 깊은 뜻은 무엇일까? 혼다 의원은 인권과 인간의 존엄성 그리고 지금도 세계 각지에서 벌어지고 있는 여성 폭력 때문이라고 말한다. But this is important today, even though it happened 60 years ago. It's important today because it's still happening in Kosovo, in Darfur, and, and now in Nigeria, when people are capturing and kidnapping girls for slavery and for marriage outside of their own, outside their own choice. So it's not an old historical issue only. It's an issue of today and tomorrow. It's an issue of violence against women. It's an issue that everyone globally needs to understand and learn. 위안부 피해자 할머니들의 비극과 애환을 가슴 깊게 공감하는 혼다 의원. 안타깝게도 할머니들의 젊음을 돌려줄 수는 없지만 
그들의 존엄은 세워주어야 한다고 강조한다. 한편 혼다 의원은 6월 민주당 연방 하원 후보 경선에서 37세 인도계 변호사 로칸나 후보와 경합을 벌인다. 일본 정부의 낙선 로비가 거세고 실리콘밸리 거물들도 상대 후보를 밀고 있는 상황에서 팔선이 만만치 않은 상황. 후원 행사 중간 식사 시간에 잠시 가졌던 인터뷰. 녹화를 하기에 좋지 않은 환경이었지만 혼다 의원과의 대담을 놓칠 수는 없었다. Good to see you, Mr. Honda. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, what does it mean to have the support of Korean Americans in your political journey? It's a, it's a critical support. I think that what it says to me is that they appreciate the work I've, I've been doing and they want it to continue and they want to continue to support it. Um, I, um, I've learned that how deep This issue goes into the Korean community's um, psyche. It's a very deep-seated issue, and uh, especially among the older ones, or the ones that have connection to uh, Korea. Um, and I, I guess my hope is that the young people who never heard about it learn and uh, become, become supportive of it also. You have been a strong advocate for civil rights. Uh, please tell us about your core value in regard to this issue. I don't think people's rights should be taken away. Uh, in this country, we, we guarantee it. We guarantee each person's civil rights. Um, human rights is a little bit different than that we should be Uh, exercising some good judgment about how we treat people and uh, so there's a moral compass that we should have inside of us that says you know what you're doing to people is wrong and act on it. As you are seeking an eighth term what is your foremost vision as a congressman? It's about you know perfecting our this great program that Obama put forward the Affordable Care Act because it's going to take 49 million people out of, out of uh, this whole section of not being insured for health. People should have a good health program. People should not be sick and wait till it's too late. It's not in this country. Um, and on that, you know, move, make sure that we have hepatitis B eradicated along with hepatitis C and HIV. The vision is just to Uh, get a lot of work done that needs to get done. Um, there's a lot of things that need to get done. Uh, take care of our immigrants, take care of undocumented people, take care of our seniors, uh, make sure our children have a good education and not to, um, not to be cheap about it. You know, we don't go cheap seats when we go to war. We should spend money like, like we're going to war for our children, you know, make sure that they get what they need. make sure this country doesn't go to war again. Because um, I think that the way we went into Iraq, we act like the biggest bully in the world. And uh, that was wrong. And so that's why I support Obama and his 
the style of diplomacy. Um, and that's why I have a lot of faith that he's going to help us with the Wiyambu, with the comfort women issue too. Okay. Yeah. Encourage Japan to do the right thing. All right, I see. Okay. I think you've been asked this question many times. Uh, what motivated you to write House Resolution 121 back in 2007? No. I just felt that Japan needed to apologize, and the people who wanted that apology, I agreed with them. You know, from the rape of Nanking to to the um, to the prisoners of war that was captured in the Bataan, uh, that was taken to um, to the Bataan death march and into Japanese uh, uh, prisoner war camps and used as uh, slaves in the mines and everything. Uh, they need to have an apology. And so it was the right thing to do. Um, you know, we have a, I think we have a moral obligation. It's one that I feel very um, passionate about. And, uh, and uh, it, it, it offends me to, to think about that. that um, and men in general should be ashamed not doing something about it, if they learn something about it. So uh, it's, and having extracted an apology from our own government, this country, for the wrongs they did to my community uh, as U.S. citizens, and we got an apology from our own government, then certainly we should demand an apology on behalf of those women who have no voice. Mm. And now they're getting their voice. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't have much time left. I see. I don't want the government to stall and outlive them because they can. Uh, and I'm not going to allow that to happen. Okay. okay, as you watch the video, I saw tears in your eyes. <laughs> and I know you've met some of the, I met the those. comfort women. I met them. Yeah, victims. And what have you learned and felt from that experience? Well, I, I learned that they're resilient. They recaptured their spirit. They recaptured their dignity. They recaptured the strength to fight for an apology. They were ashamed for decades. They were ashamed. People were ashamed of them. They did nothing wrong. And so, you know, the shame was misplaced. It should be on the Japanese government. That's where the shame belongs. Okay. And recently, President Obama addressed an issue about comfort women, saying, quote, this was a terrible, egregious violation of human rights. Those women were violated in ways that, even in the midst of war, were shocking. What is your reaction, and what do you think the next step should be? To tell us what he said to Abe. Okay. I want to have, a, I want to have him... A, have a conversation with Abe. Mm. Okay. I want to know what he says to him. Mm. Okay, last question with a different topic. You are a leader and role model for many Asian Americans. How can we make our society and government more ethnically well represented? Well, encourage people to run for office. Uh, give them opportunities to participate at the, you know uh, at the lowest level of uh, a community you know in churches uh, and nonprofit organizations to to uh, find something to fight for find something to correct mm -hmm. and if they feel good about that then find other things and then uh, let people know that you're willing to work for them and be their public servant to fight for them and fight for uh, you know just laws and, and, and to do the right thing even though it's not popular sometimes you have to do things that are not popular but it's right mm -hmm. to have the, the guts to do the right thing mm -hmm. and not to be worried about what people think because okay. we as Asians we're raised to be ashamed you know so um, 
but we shouldn't be ashamed of, of what we do. You know, okay. we shouldn't be afraid to speak up, step up, and do something. So, because um, we have there are many, uh, all ethnic groups come from some place, and that some place we all had leaders there, right? Mm -hmm. So, in this country, uh, we should exercise that same power. Congressman Honda, thank you for your time, and we wish you a great journey in working for civil rights. Thank you. Thank I hope there's not too many bumps. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. I thank you. It. Thank you. Martin Luther King said that we have to be people of conscience, not subject to the winds of popularity, but to be conscious about what is right and what is the right thing to do. That's been pretty much my anchor. I was born in Stockton, California in 1941. During the war, Executive Order 9066 was effected by President Roosevelt. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked and the government took us to the uh, fairgrounds. They parceled out the horse stalls for each family. And then afterwards, they put us on a train, pulling the shutters down so that we couldn't see where we were going. What they did to us was wrong. They took our constitutional rights and set it aside, put us in camps behind barbed wire fences. Sometimes the families were separated for years. It was a difficult period of time. We're only as strong as the weakest among us. It's up to each of us to lend a hand, to look beyond ourselves, to challenge the status quo. That's how we move forward. People ask me what Silicon Valley's like. I tell them it's not a geographic area. It's a state of mind. Congressman Honda early on realized the potential of nanotechnology. He also realized the fact that the United States was way behind in funding the research. He initiated the first bill. The Nanotechnology and Innovation Act of 2003 that provided ultimately almost $4 billion worth of grants. This was exactly the kind of policy that our business community needed. While in Congress, I realized that uh, there's a population of our veterans that have not been given enough attention. What I appreciate about Mike in terms of finding solutions, particularly around veterans homelessness, is he's been out to our facility and visited us and asked us what works. He's talked to veterans about what's been successful for them. We send them abroad in harm's way to protect us here in this country. When they return home, it's our obligation to protect them here. What stands out about his leadership is he doesn't shy away from from standing up for folks uh, you know, who don't get much representation or whose voice is often suppressed or who are on the margins. One of the things critically important to me is the issue of equity and education for each and every child. Congressman Honda really understands education deeply. STEM education is very important in our community. Science, technology, engineering, and math. Where I teach at a local community college, he brought funding for underserved students. He's done everything he can to get technology into every school. Congressman Honda is committed to improving the lives of children and their families in the region. He is a track record of years, not just in Washington, but also here in the Valley, in the trenches, getting things done. He does whatever is right. His moral compass is on all the time. Whether it's uh, economic parity and progress, social justice, immigration, education, civil rights. He leads from his convictions. A champion for working people. He's a champion for our community. He works behind the scenes in ways people don't completely understand, but the work is, ends up being incredibly effective to the people on the ground that, that need the resources, that need that kind of advocacy. It is not just my way or highway, you know. He is willing to listen. He knows how to execute, get things done. Congressman Honda cares a lot. An amazing voice for Silicon Valley. News Magazine을 마칩니다. 시청해주신 여러분 고맙습니다.